Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And today is the day, folks. Today is the day we are going to put in Oridan's downtown skyline. Well, at least the first part of it. At least the first part of it. So <laughs> I've just been beyond excited for this point. We're at episode 25 of Oridan. We've had several live streams as well, and we've made it. We've made it to the downtown. So thanks to everyone who joined me on the live stream on Sunday, where we actually started off in the downtown and put in this sneaky little park here. And we called it the Owlid and Pride Park. It clearly looks like owl eyes or glasses from up above, but definitely owl eyes with the lights in there. And of course, we've got the rainbow colours for Pride as well. So it's a very appropriate name. And that was a really, really fun stream. So thanks to everyone for joining in for that. And this is starting off our downtown in the grid network that we laid out last episode here, along with the little transport hub as well that we did put in. And I am having issues with the intercity trains here, so which is something that I need to look at. I've had a little play around with it, and I can't seem to get it working by redrawing in the connections using the unlimited connections mod. So it's something I need to have a little look at further because I'm desperate to get into city trains right into our downtown here and bring in lots of tourists before we get our port in and provide our airport and provide other options for them to arrive. But here we have it. We are about to fill in this grid. Let's get to it. And so here we have it. So we did take Detroit as our inspiration for our road network. However, we're not necessarily taking the skyline inspiration from Detroit. I've been looking at so many skylines on Google Earth over the last couple of months, to be honest, and coming together with a, a little bit of a plan. But we are not basing this on one city. It's going to be a little bit of mishmash of different things that I've seen. But we are going to obviously, as per the rest of Oregon, try and use as many vanilla assets as possible. So really, the skyline is going to be based around what is possible within City Skylines with the vanilla and DLC assets, plus a load of mods to help us out. So first things first, I am going to just kick right off by placing in our main skyline buildings. And I do know pretty much exactly where I want all of the key buildings. Now, the best assets really for this and the tallest assets are the ones that come with the Japanese content creator pack and also the art deco creator pack here as well. There's some great buildings here like Panoa Street. Definitely going to be using that. And we are definitely going to be using this office skyscraper from the Japanese content creator pack. This is probably one of the best looking buildings actually in the game. And now this little space here is exactly where I was eyeing up for this right about here. And now I do just want to be pretty careful about orientation on this. This whole skyline, it's everything about orientation. Now, from this highway's perspective, the inspiration I've taken for that is LA, where we've got big skyscrapers in the downtown right up against this highway. So that is what I want to go for here. And then that'll give us lots of opportunities for various different styles of detailing underneath the highway as well. And I'm thinking we can slot in some bars somewhere along the line, probably some tents and that sort of thing as well, and make it feel like a proper inner city and realistic from that sense. But yeah, we want to get the orientation of this right. And with this being such a key street up the middle here, I am thinking, and with this one, that we're actually going to spin this round. So we'll have it facing the other way. So let's just grab this and we'll put it against this road here. Leaving ourselves a little bit of room around the sides as well for a little spot of detailing, I think is important there. And in fact, because this is going to be an absolutely mammoth job, I am going to come in with Surface Painter now and just fill in these little gaps so that they are not forgotten about further along the line. So there we go, we are completely surface painted in all the way through that grid square there. And we have that really nice tool building, our first one in, quite excitingly. Now the next tool asset that I want to place is the tallest, really, in the base game. And that is the one that we've already mentioned, which is Panoa Street. I want to do something a little bit different to it. So it's super recognisable, like this. However, because we have mods, we can use Move It, and we can copy it. Because it is a unique building, so you can't technically place in two. But with Move It, we absolutely can. So we're going to cheat and we're going to place in two. And what I'm going to do is actually merge them together in the centre here. So I'm going to get them in reasonably close together. And the having these lined up perfectly is really quite important to make sure that this building looks sensible. So I really want to line them up really nice and neatly in the middle here. So that the windows all flow together and it feels seamless like it is one building. So I think we have got that there all the way around. And what that gives us is this building that 
you know, goes from one big tall spire to something with two. Looks a little bit like the Petronas Towers. A little bit like that, uh, but not exactly the same. So it just helps to vary up our skyline there from what you would ordinarily see from just the base game plus those DLCs and content creator packs. Now again, the orientation of this is super important to me. So anyone who has followed the series closely will know I have banned on for ages about one particularly important view. So from quite early on in the series, we built this memorial park. And this whole archway was designed so that the skyline would sit right in the centre of it in this view. So this view is ultimately probably the most important to me in the whole of Oridan because I've banged on about it quite as much as I have. So I want to make sure that these towers yeah, are facing this way. So that is why I've put those on that orientation so that we can see both of those towers from this island here. And actually the other crucial views, I think, from Exe's Island, really want that to be a nice view. Also from Liberty Rock over here. And again, we can see those two towers from there by situating it like that. And the other one is, of course, from Solitude Port. So looking out over these nice greenery and this office park that we've got in the foreground, again, that looks nice. And the fact that this office skyscraper is at a slightly different angle to it as well just helps to add interest. We're not putting everything into a big square grid, as you would have seen from the road layout. So that's probably two of our most important buildings in there. So the next one that I do want to put in is another one from the Japanese content creator packs, and that is the company headquarters. And we are going to place this just in this little block down here. And I think I think I would like it on this road so that traffic and stuff are going out onto this back road as opposed to pushing out more traffic into this central roundabout here because it is going to be rather busy with this one on this road these two situated here as well yeah it's going to start getting very busy and we'll look at road connections etc in a second so we've got the company headquarters and again i want to do just a little trick with this and this building which also comes with the japanese content creator pack the high rise office building I would like one of these actually in this space and I'm thinking here is a perfect spot for it and the reason being again that as we're coming along this highway we've got these nice tall skyscrapers up against it and coming from this angle as well it's a nice looking building there Statue of Liberty just right in the background I would like that there however I also want to change up the company headquarters building as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to again use move it we're going to copy that and we are going to place it in alongside this company headquarters and I'm actually going to put in four because what we're going to do is then do a little bit of building merging to change up the look and feel of this company headquarters. So yeah there we go so we have merged four of them in and it just works super nicely because the windows are exactly the same the style of the building the brick on it is exactly the same We've got these lovely little archways that merge in really nicely underneath that window as well so everything's height aligned the front of the building looks pretty nice the one thing is there are quite a few planters that end up sitting out here but it's neat it's neat and it'll do but yeah there we go so again we've just changed up that building to give our skyline a slightly unique feel versus just popping in those vanilla buildings and that's just simply by having the move it mod there now the next building that i would like to get in could be potentially a bit of a controversial one but i do want to actually have the gherkin in here and the main reason for this is because when we look at night time it lights up so nicely and of course i was going to say it's not going to do it because it doesn't have power now is it but when it does have power it lights up beautifully and it's actually a really fully stunning building. So this one may be controversial, but I really quite like the look of this building, to be honest. I think it adds some nice interest to the skyline. It's not just a square blocky building. It's super nice and simple. And I would add, I've already bobbed off a few of the props and things from around the bottom of this building here. We've got a nice clean slate to work with. And yeah, I want to position this entrance sort of on the diagonal into this main square here. And again, I think it looks quite nice up against this metro plaza as well. So we have got the gherkin there and we're going to have to keep an eye on our money because our, our hourly budget is going to be absolutely diminished by having all of these very expensive, unique buildings in it. So we may struggle a little bit, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. And 
probably come in with a lot of money making builds right after this we've still got quite a bit of industry to do which will help to bring in some more money with some unique factories and that sort of thing so now the next building that i would like to place is the servicing services office and we are going to put this right in this little gap here and i'm just gonna to have to turn on anarchy because the back corner is apparently clipping although it's really not it's actually quite all right on that pavement there now i love how this building looks with this marble wall up against this monorail station so i'm happy with the positioning of that and then also with these gardens and the steps it's sort of this angle here mirrors the downslope of the slip lane there as well so happy with that and again when we're coming in from the highway this is a really nice blocky tower block office building to have right up against our downtown raised highway here and it's also low enough that it doesn't block any of these key much taller buildings from the skyline here and we are also going to put in the transport tower and again i love how this building lights up it's absolutely stunning at night the back of it it glows almost a blue color really 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 pretty so we are going to put that in there and there is a bit of bob work that we need to do on this because i definitely do not want those car parks sitting around it we'll be putting in our own car parking for the downtown so let's immediately get rid of all of these car parking spaces and we'll just bob them right off and as well i am also going to bob off these trees just so they are gone and we have a little bit of cleaner space to work with and then on that basis i am also just going to move it up just a little tiny bit there's a bit more space at the front and back there now in terms of detailing around it i am going to use these spaces actually and we are going to put in some planters into there and i think what i am going to use is these gravel planters let's just turn prop and tree anarchy on and what we will do is try and fill these spaces nicely with these ones we have also used these in the transport hub as well and then let's go ahead and put in some foliage there we go we've got basic plants and i haven't filled up the whole thing i want to see some of that gravel coming through so then let's grab our props and our trees from here and we will copy that over to the other side and i'm actually just going to spin it round so it doesn't look like it's perfectly exactly the same right here and we can have that lamp post in the corner of it absolutely fine with that there we go that just adds a nice bit of decoration out there and i think what we will do as well just for good measure is add in a couple of benches we'll do these high level benches i think and there we go now we do have this space here as well which i'm just going to fill in with surface painter i think what we will do along the side here and again we'll do more of this in the detailing time lapse let's put in a couple of these advertising boards here and we are just going to do a run of them in the street and i want to make sure they're all lined up quite nicely and then going around the back as well i think we will just surface paint in those little areas there just tidy that up just ever so much and we could also put in another planter i think back here and i think this time we'll use two of these which will complement the curve of the transport tower quite nicely there so again let's just put in a couple of plants and i will go back and use the same street tree that we've used out the front of the building as well so just very simply like that and again let's grab that copy that and if we hold up we can rotate it in 45 degree angles and then we can copy it across to the other side there we go we've got our transport tower in and then moving on to our next building this is actually the only workshop asset that i'm going to have in the whole downtown here everything else will be vanilla dlcs or content creator packs only and Apart from the props, of course, we'll have lots of workshop props to detail it all up. But here we have the 101 Collins Street from the workshop. And when I was scouting for various different buildings here, I found this, plopped it in and went to the nighttime view. And it instantly spoke to me and told me that I basically had to have this in the downtown. And I will show you exactly why once we add in some power. Let's just get a really crude power connection to that. And anyone who's in the stream, I did do a little spoiler of this, so you will have seen it. But when we turn to night time, the top of it is for your candy pink. I had to have it. It came on the workshop like this, and I just had to have that because I think it adds a really nice effect to the skyline. Now, just having a little look at this in terms of orientation, in case anybody is wondering here. Now I've had, I've put this slightly separate to the rest of the downtown and this is really going to be the tall peaks that we've got out here now. Everything else will be slightly lower, more the gherkin size as opposed to these extra tall buildings that we have here. 
and I wanted this extra peak. I didn't want everything in just one cluster. We've got a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room between those buildings there, which I just think helps to add a little bit of interest. And from looking at the various different inspirations on Google Earth, I think this is what spoke to me the most for Oridon, is having these two taller peaks split like this. Now let's get back to daylight and back to building and I will just remove this power line quickly before I forget. Now I will just continue to get in some of our key unique assets and then I'll be right back. So there we go. So I've just added in just a couple more buildings, actually, not too many. We have got this one over here from the Art Deco pack. And there's actually a little bit of bob work we do need to do on this just to tidy it up. And I need to get rid of some certain trees here. So I am going to find the individual tree, which is down here, which I think is not a bush. I think it's a tree variant too. There we go. We're getting close. <laughs> There we go, and we're going to remove that one from the pavement here. And then I am also going to find this. I think this is an older here. Or, oh, yep, it is. And let's remove that one from that pavement here. Now the others, I'm actually not too opposed to these vanilla trees happening here. The one thing we could do is take the olders and replace them for something perhaps a little bit better. And I'm wondering if actually these horse chestnuts would look quite good here, the ones that we've got on these roads. So let's just see if we can find that, which is this one. So yeah, we will replace those and we will also take the other olders. We'll take the other beaches actually. And I think I might actually replace them for the horse chestnut falls. That is just looking slightly more interesting there. We have still got the smaller vanilla trees, but I don't mind them. I'm quite happy to have quite a bit of green around this. And again, we'll come in with detailing and add more greenery actually around this and have a little bit of a green park area around that building there. And then we have also added in the high interest tower. And I've actually doubled this up again using Move It to give it a little bit more width, uh, even though it is a chunky monkey building already. Yeah, I think just adding a little bit of width again helps to give it a little bit of extra uniqueness and we have put in some parking now as well so we've got a parking garage behind here we also have one over here where i have put in the downtown hotel and this other shopping center from the japanese content creator packs just merged in a car park to the back of that and then similarly a smaller multi-story onto the back of this hotel here so that we are starting to get those parking facilities in for the residents and again we just got another of those shopping centers over here but in terms of the unique assets, I think that's pretty much what we are going to do for around the downtown. And the rest will be filled with commercial, IT cluster, office buildings, uh, plazas, parks, that kind of thing, and more parking, of course. But one of the other key set of assets that I also want to distribute around our downtown is also the trade school assets from the university. So we are going to go ahead and place in a, another campus area. And this is going to massively dilute our first campus area, but it's OK. It's OK. We will survive. And I'm just going to fill this entire area for now up to this train line and all the way into the start of this park. And you'll see why in just a second. And this then just gives us flexibility for where we're going to place these trade school buildings. So. What I would like actually up at Alden Pride Park at the head of the area here is we are going to take the trade school main administration building here and place that right at the end. And again, the reason for this is that it just looks awesome at the end of this road. Now we have got lots of blockages. We've got lots of transport layers of height. As we come underneath the highway here, 
and it gets out of the way. There we go. That being centralized, especially with the Oridon flags we've got going on here as well, looks super, super duper nice. And I am probably going to set this back onto its own road out here, but we will do that because in the next episode, we will be working on our central park here and that is going to form very much part of it. So we will probably adjust that when we come on to the park area there. But for now, that is our administration building and it will be absolutely aligned and situated in the centre of this road here. But now that we've placed that and because we have got unlock all on now, which gives us flexibility in where we can place the assets. So if you have find it, there is an option in the options button to unlock all assets. This one right here. And that then allows you to be able to place any of the buildings while still keeping milestones and the such like on. Now, the first asset I definitely want in here is the School of Engineering. Some of these buildings are super chunky and add a really, really nice effect to our downtown. And again, when we're coming along the highway here, thinking about our different angles, this building is nice and low, but adds a really nice layer of height going up to some of these taller buildings here. Just building up that density as we come into the downtown. And yeah, it's just, this is a really nice looking asset. A really, really nice looking asset. And again, we need to come in with detailing around this to tidy up the edges. I probably add in a few more planters and the such like. And I definitely do want to take off the park in here. So let's do that with Bob straight away. We'll just remove all of those parking spaces. So that just tidies it up nicely for us. And then I would also like to put the police academy over this side and again we're going to put this relatively close to the highway but we are going to put this behind this big administration building here and this gives us a little bit of breathing room in between that collector there as well uh, in order to do some nice detailing now in behind pinoa street here is a, another area where i'd like to put in a couple more of the university buildings and the first one is the media lab now the media lab in every university honestly looks really fantastic i particularly love this corner with the steps here which goes really, really nicely onto the side of the street there. Now, I am just going to push this back ever so slightly so that we have a touch more room to play with. So we'll just move it very, very slightly away from the street there. Line it up, I think, on this side. We've got that corner nicely in that junction there. I think it looks really good. And then I would also like to place in a laboratories down here as well. Again, we're going to be dotting the campus out around the downtown here. So it's not going to be a unified campus build. It is very much going to be spaced out and dotted around, unlike our liberal arts campus, which is heavily campus based and all located on one pitch of land. This one, I am just going to move this super duper close. We've got a nice alleyway through there and respecting those steps on the corner there and the ramp down. We'll just do that but i will for this one definitely bob off those car parking spaces and similarly for the media lab as well we're going to be doing a lot of car parking spacing removing on this episode bob will be working overtime and i do actually just want to remove that extra bin that we've got there as well because i just don't like how that is um so i think in fact we'll just remove both of those I just didn't like the look there sitting in the middle of that alleyway now these are quite low buildings to be up to next to this high one, but we are going to add some extra height in next to it in the form of some IT cluster buildings. Now the other school that we haven't been in from this trade school is the School of Travel and Tourism. And I think this is going to be the location for it. And we just want to be a little bit careful in terms of orientation of this. Now obviously this is the one that lends itself perfectly to a road underneath the bridge there. However, I'm actually not going to do it in this case. I am going to leave that and we'll do probably a little bit more detailing around that side. But just in terms of orientation, I'm actually thinking potentially on its side may look nicer here. So we've got that big bulky front facing out towards the highway. Because the front of it is not particularly nice looking, but the back of it is a lot nicer. Particularly because we're going to have the park over here with that view. I think that orientation suits a little bit better. So there are just two more assets that I do want to place in for now. And these, again, are just going to go up against this collector road here, which is not usually what I would do for university builds. But I think it does sit in reasonably nicely here. And then we will also put in a library next to it. So they're nice and close to the police academy there. And this is all going to come together, really, when we do the detailing for this area, where we can flesh out the areas around these and make them sit in a little bit better than it feels like they do right now. 
Okay, so now having in the university assets, I next want to go around and add in some IT and commercial. So I will do that in a time lapse and then be right back. there we go so there is an awful lot of commercial IT and office buildings in here and I have plopped in a few car parks along the way as well so I've tried to keep up along this highway the view of some big blocky buildings layering in the density amongst the highway as we go so we've got some of these office buildings here some of the IT cluster buildings and again up here as well so hopefully that should give a nice rounded view of the highway. Now this section here we will be leaving. So I've put in a couple of buildings just to add a little bit of an effect for now. But we'll be leaving that as we'll be doing a kind of arts district around it in a later episode. There's a lot to cover in this space just as it is for now. So there will be a little bit more density up against the highway this side. So for now we'll just have to imagine that. But then what I've done here is filled in some of these spaces. One more university building there. We've actually got some residential blocks, a few little car parks here, and then more offices dotted around. Some blocks of commercial out the front. And the reason for this is we're just trying to layer up those height layers as we go back in towards the downtown. So a few lower buildings out front. And that is what we will be doing down on this waterfront as well when we come to it. Now again over here we've plotted in some IT buildings merged a few of them together, tried to position some right next to each other to create seamless kind of one building look and feel like these ones here and these two big ones again over here. We do have a car parking asset again here, more offices right around the train station. So I've tried to go for quite a built up feel as you come in towards the train station here. So quite a lot of infrastructure on either side, obviously lots of detailing that needs to be done in and around there. 
And around the transport hub as well, we've got some lower layers of height here, but it should still feel pretty dense as we go all the way around. Uh, and scoot up towards Panoa Street, which will just hover and dominate over this whole plaza area. And then I did also as well put in this unique asset over here. We'll do a nice metro plaza out the front of it to add a bit of space. And then lots of commercial all around the outsides here. And then as well in the middle here, what I have done is merged a couple of office buildings into the back of these commercial buildings here again, which we have merged. So we get this seamless, nice diagonal corner coming out onto this junction because this is an effect I was really keen to have, was to have this look of this corner onto this massive intersection here especially with this IT building as well. The orientation of it really important, making sure that entrance is facing out towards this big junction here. And then as we go around, this is a full block of commercial here merged into these office buildings at the side and then these ones coming out at the top as well there. So I think that gives quite a nice little block of the modern city centre commercial effect there. And over this side as well, we've done a bit more commercial where we've merged it in to get a nice seamless curve actually, which follows this road. I think works pretty nicely almost looks a little bit European which we probably will carry on into the arts district down this way and very similar here up against the monorail as well slight curve in the orientation of these buildings here just to follow that road so next thing to do is actually to rework our transit line so we have got some monorail in I would like to bring in some metro so I am going to just toggle whiteness now so that we can see where the metro lines are we do obviously have our big metro interchange right there. So I would like to bring a couple of lines out. So I think one is going to go straight up to Allard and Pride Park and it will come up through the Central Park this way as well. I think we'll add another stop to this line over this side so it just bends out and makes a little bit more sense there. And then we'll add in a new line coming out and across this way. So I would definitely like to utilise the space in front of this unique asset for a large metro plaza. And I think one of the content creator pack metro stations fits in really nicely here. But I just definitely, definitely want to make sure that this is centred in this area. So that it looks really good from that point of view. Because I like the effect of those roofs in front of that building. And it also just creates that feeling of space as well. We don't want this building super cramped in. We want lots of space around it. Which is why I've left this ring, this gap around the building there. So I think that works there. And then as well for that line, we will just drop in a bog standard vanilla metro station. It could actually be just back here so that there's easy access to these other roads and down to the transport harbour there. I think that makes more sense. We've got a monorail right there. So that feels like it fits. Let's just join up these metro tracks and then we can add in our lines. But there we go. So we have got that line which extends right into the train station actually there, which I think follows around quite nicely like that and then for our second line what i will do is i think i will actually add one right in next to this building here so i can just take them straight up from there up to the office site skyscraper and then we will come in and we've got one right there i think yeah we will just come down and pop this on the corner here yes yeah, so we'll just add it in right there and then of course we'll join up those tracks so there we go, we have got our transit lines in. So we have the metro that's running all the way out this way. We also have the monorail, clearly, which follows through that way. And then I have added an extra stop to this metro that comes through from the top end or the middle of Canal Eden there through the bus station, which is adding an extra stop on this side of the Arts District and then coming into the main hub here. And then we've added in our new line which runs up through Owlerdon Pride Park and then I've just dropped in another station up here so that we can remember to add that into the main park down this side as well. We may even follow it through to this overground metro station so there's a bit of a transfer unit there although they can obviously get onto the monorail from there as well. And then just add in an extra station to this line coming in from Canal Eden too. So that should give everybody lots of transport options moving around this city. And I have just seen actually that we do need to just extend this monorail line down to this stop. So that really should give us lots of good transport options. And transport in the downtown is just super important, trying to avoid any traffic issues. And at the moment, we don't really seem to have too many traffic issues, which is good news. There's a few cars moving around and... The Metro Plaza is actually pretty busy looking at it here. It's 
quite a few people waiting on the various different platforms. Uh, going over to the train station as well. Yeah, there's quite a few people using the internal trains and we obviously need to fix the intercity trains because that will make this whole plaza a hell of a lot busier and be quite a bit nicer. And we do, of course, have our trams as well, which is something we do need to look at now. So we have brought our tram line in all, all the way and we have not stopped it anywhere. So let's definitely add in some stops for our tram network and get a few more people using that. So I think what we'll do is we'll add a stop actually down here close to the park and also to the bus station there if people wanted to utilise that. Then add in a couple of stops here where we've got the dedicated tram lanes. I will, I think this road should be a little bit quieter and we have got the monorail right there so let's add in a tram stop in the middle here close to this commercial and also to the university buildings we have there. Then it comes into the tram hub so I think actually that will be plenty of stops, just a couple of extra dotted around through that route there. And then of course our tram line will run on down this way and down into the canal district there so that will be our second route but for now that will do for tram so we should be pretty well covered from transport options here and there are an awful lot of people actually using the metro line there oh yes <laughs> that is brilliant to see transferring from the different metro lines that's excellent not coming out and getting in their cars which is uh, the biggest thing that we want to avoid here for our downtown Lots and lots of walkability is the absolute key. So the next thing to do is just our little strip of waterfront here. So now this other waterfront we're going to come on to in future episodes. But we are just going to concentrate on this little bit right in front of our downtown to make sure we've got a super, super front drop to our skyline here. Now there's one very specific asset that I would like to put in here. And that is the Modern Art Museum. So I am just going to pause the game very quickly, place that in, and we're going to spin this right round because I want the orientation of it to be this way. And I think in order to fit this in, it's going to be pretty tight and we want to avoid any of these, any of this terrain sticking out through the keys. So I am just going to pull these keys out ever so slightly just to make that slightly wider and avoid some of that terrain pushing up through it there. Just like that will be good. And then let's obviously make sure that the keys are at the height that we want them to be and not dipping down now that we've moved them. And we'll also make sure that the Modern Art Museum is at the same height as the keys as well so that everything flows together nicely. Now we do need a road down in front of it. So I'm just going to we can hit play again now. I'm just going to grab one of our concrete roads that we're using pretty often. Now there's a bit of bob work to be done here as well because there's things like I don't want that trash can on it definitely don't want that that one can go and I'm also not too keen on the parking spaces down here although I recognize that we do need some parking so I think what I will do is actually upgrade this road I think I think in this instance I may actually leave them surprise surprise but I am going to just bob those vanilla trees and change them for something else yeah, I think the horse chestnut just looks a lot nicer here. And we've got a nice little space here where we can do a little bit of plaza action right in front of the monorail station there. And there are people using this and walking down the keys, which is, well, I say walking down the seat keys, floating down the stairs and through the stairs. I've been watching is uh, what they're doing here. But that is good to see that people are using this and also using this walking path as well that we've got in down the side of the keys here which is really nice to see. I was really hoping people would actually use that. So yeah, let's just upgrade this road now to parking lot. So there we go. So we've got a nice little bit of parking in down here. And actually, do you know what? Because of that, let's get rid of those vanilla parking spaces. They just don't make sense when we've got that lovely, nice, normal parking lot right next to it there. And then we will absolutely come in here in the detailing time lapse and sort this all out. So we'll have definitely surface painter to fill in these odd gaps here. And I think we will use surface painter actually over all of this area here so that we get this nice plaza behind it, an opportunity for some detailing in there. And certainly this bit in between the waterfront will all need surface painting in there. So yeah, I just think that it fits in really nicely. Like it's super low, but it gives a really nice foreground to these buildings and particularly we go to the nighttime shot, the way it lights up is just gorgeous. So I love that as a forefront and a waterfront building to our downtown skyline here. And checking from different angles of the orientation, we come down this road here. It sticks out above the monorail station, so I think it works from that perspective. 
And from this plaza, we can just see it peeking out between the buildings there as well. So there's a few different viewpoints that will hit it there. Okay, and then down this side, because the noise pollution is actually not too bad, somewhat surprisingly, in this little corner, and we have quite high residential demand, and I feel like this would be a really nice high value spot for some really nice condos, apartment building right down in the city centre, down in the downtown. So we are going to put in some high density residential into this area. So there is a specific asset that I have in mind for here, and I think a couple of these wouldn't go amiss. But what I would like to do is make sure that they are most definitely lined up against this key, against the waterfront. And yeah, we will just line those up into a row. And I think I definitely want them to be this sort of lighter colour which I think fits in a little bit better with the downtown rather than being that really dark shade that the couple of them were then. And then there are a few other high density assets I think which would lend themselves quite well to here. Um, that one's not too bad. There's a couple of really nice looking tall high density buildings. Uh, this is actually one of them that's not too bad as well. So let's just plop that down over there for a second. Um, we potentially could have another of these. Again, it's a very downtown looking building. It doesn't look like residential, honestly, that one to me. And then there is this one too, again, which doesn't look quite like residential, but is. And actually has quite a nice little porch area here, if we can make sure that that's all level with the ground and nice. And then, of course, with our downtown, we always want to be checking orientations and what this looks like from various different angles. And I think that works in that position. Now this one, definitely don't want it just sat there. So I think what we will do is bring it back into this corner here. We can move this one up, potentially put it right next to it. We'll leave a little bit of a gap for a small amount of detailing, I think, in there. And there are a couple of other assets which actually look quite nice if I can find them in amongst the terrible ones. So yeah, this one is actually a lovely, lovely asset, one of my favourite high density residential ones. Then we do also have this one too. I think actually in terms of the height, these should probably be switched around. Let's have the slightly lower one this side and we'll have the taller one this side. Because I think this one gives us a nicer layer of height up towards the big tall downtown buildings there. And similarly, this one looks a little bit better out the front here. So we can turn that round. And again, in terms of an orientation, we've got this lovely entranceway here. We've got a door in there. So let's make sure that that is framing nicely to that road as it comes down. And we can do some really nice tree detailing, repeated tree patterns, I think, along the front in front of these condos here. And then this space here absolutely lends itself to a car park. So let's definitely get one in using parking lot roads here. Okay, and so again, we will come through in the detailing time lapse and tidy this all up. Let's just make sure we're adjusting the spawn points for these buildings for now so that they definitely get their rubbish collection and everything that they are going to need. So I think that just gives us a really nice frontage to this main downtown. And the Gherkin really is sitting pride of place there with nothing much in front of it, which is exactly what we want to see. We'll put in some small little plaza detailing in front of it there, but leave that relatively open. So there we go. I think that really is all of the buildings now in for this main downtown area. So it leaves an awful lot of detailing. But just before we do that, I thought we could build out this central plaza together. Now, the inspiration that I was using for this was Detroit, as we know. And so if we just take a really quick trip back to Google Earth to have a look at this plaza, then we can take some inspiration from it. So here we are in Detroit and we have our little plaza area that we've taken inspiration from. Clearly it's turned out very differently in our city, but this was the road layout that we took down to the, well, what is now Owladon Pride Park in Oradon. But here we have the main plaza and there's a few different ideas that we can definitely take from this. So we have this little building here, which actually is an ice skating rink, it looks like. Again, I've never been to Detroit, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But we'll definitely incorporate that uh, with a fountain outside. Looks like some little market stalls, definitely some parasols and the such like. We have a really big statue at this end here, which I really, really like the look of. And lots of trees and greenery. 
So we can absolutely replicate a lot of this. And then down this end as well, we do have a festival stage. Now, I don't think our space is going to be big enough to fit a festival stage, unfortunately, because you can't bob off the props. So to get it into the orientation that we'd want here is very, very difficult in our space. But definitely what I can replicate is this green area with, I'm thinking maybe a gazebo at the end, trees around and looks like different sculptures, flags, uh, poles, that sort of thing all around it. So we can absolutely do that in Oridon. So in terms of this plaza, I think the asset I'm actually going to use here is the IT club because it's small enough that it looks OK. But then it also has this nice rooftop terrace here with the tables and chairs and parasols on it. And then also has a nice backing to it as well. I think this is definitely the asset that we want to use here, but we're going to have to do a little bit of bob work to make it make sense. So let's get Bob. And firstly, I am going to remove all of the trees and all of the bushes here. So we've got a little bit of space more to play around with. And actually, I think we can leave the tiles because right in front of that, I'd also like to put in a trade school fountain. And again, with this one, because of the place that I want to move it to. So I want to give a little bit of breathing room around these different assets. So yeah, I think we'll move it to there. So what I do want to do is remove all of these bushes, the tiles, absolutely everything from around this. And in fact, actually, what we will do is just use Bob to move the hang around marker that's at the bottom. Yeah, this one. So what I am going to do is just offset it slightly up this way. So it's a little bit closer so that people aren't hanging around on the pavement here. That makes a little bit more sense. We'll just tick green there and that will have moved that. So I think that is our main features in there. And we'll connect that up with the path so that's all connected and no problems afterwards. But what we do want to do is thinking back to the Google Earth plaza that we just had a look at is add in a couple more things so i think in terms of the statue i think realistically i do have a couple of workshop statues european type things but they're a little bit small so i am thinking we are going to go for the good old rider standard statue here which i think will be positioned quite nicely on this corner there let's get our tiling and our path decals in so there we have our tiling in around that so we de definitely do want to place in some paths so that people can walk all through this and also to connect up the it building there so we'll just dot that round in a square around this fountain plaza here and do you know what i think to add a little bit of something extra to this we are going to add in some of our fountain jets just the little ones here and we will just add in four of those i think on either side just like this just the small ones, which just gives a little bit of something extra to this fountain, I think. Now, down this side, we had the stage. So what I'm thinking for that is that actually, instead of putting in a stage, which we can't really do here, we are going to add in just a screen like so. And I'm thinking actually we might put in the sports screen here because it's a little bit bigger, has a little bit more stature. So we will add that in like that. And then around it, I do want to decorate with path. And I'm thinking zoo path is going to be the best thing for this. So we're going to get the propolis zoo path here. And I'm going to go onto freeform. I'm going to turn all snapping off for this. And then what I'd like to do is try and create a really curvy, bendy pattern, like so, down the side here. And then what I am going to do is copy all of this segments and nodes and we're actually going to mirror it yeah I think that will do nicely for this section and then we definitely want to get some really nice bushy trees in here and I know we slightly overdid it with the live oaks down the other end so I'm going to be a little bit more careful before we fixed it at least about how we put those in so I think we'll just go like that for now and then we're going to dot in some other trees around so that we still get that really nice enclosed tree lined effect here and I'm thinking we will just line this area with these sculpture fences so we get a little bit of definition to our screen area and then we can just move and adjust this screen now right into the center push it back a little bit so there's a little bit more space there I think just like that should work quite nicely and then if we go to nighttime view yeah we can see that these little fences do light up with little lights on the top of them which is really quite cute and we just want to put in a couple more lights around here so let's grab our park lights 
I think, yeah, we'll just go for the regular street lamp and dot in a couple more of these just to brighten up this pathway. I think if we bring it back to daylight just for a second, what I would like to do, I think, is just add in a couple of extra bushes around here, just at the back here, just to beautify that a little bit. And then we can see as we're coming into here, we do get the tree-lined effect. You can see the sculpture fence in between it. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I think that's looking quite nice. And people are using that path down there, which is great to see. And so down at this end, I would actually like to do something somewhat similar with the zoo path again. So we will create a wobbly, zigzaggy pattern like so. And then in the middle of it, we can do a really nice little seating area with some parasols and such like. And then again, we can just use our trees to give this a nice green border. I am, because this is Oridan, I am just going to add a couple of colourful lights in here. So let's just grab this prop and see if we can just shift this down just ever so slightly to give a glow around the bottom of this fountain. Yeah, I think just a subtle blue glow on that fountain works quite nicely there, actually. So we'll leave that. But there we go. So we have got our central plaza park there. And there's going to be a lot of people crossing this road. So we need to keep an eye on that. It may be that we need to put in some underpasses or some bridges crossing across to it but yeah hopefully that should do it for now so seeing as that is the main plaza done we've got all of our buildings in i think the next process is really to go around and detail all of this up so i am going to add in a few more plazas we'll detail this area here this one over here definitely all around the waterfront but i will leave a few of the areas around here so that we can detail them on streams together and add in yeah a few little extra touches we're definitely going to be putting some car park in underneath this road as well to get rid of all of these gazillions of cars that have now filled these roads where i allowed them to park down here and making sure we've got enough parking in the center um but besides that i think it's a lot of surface painter a lot of street detailing so small plaza areas with planters lots of benches places to sit in and around the city center the, uh, detailing up these probably put in some more sculptures and some more fountains i think there's going to be a lot of sculptures around the center of the Oridan downtown so yeah that was definitely the theme that we'll go for we're going to have a nice green garden here we'll have lots of different green areas to keep that Oridan greenery coming into the downtown and actually very similar to what we saw in detroit looking on google earth so no kind of massive departure from that so with that i will dive into a detail in time lots and i will give you a heads up it's going to be a long one but I'll be right back.
and there we have it so yeah that was an awful lot of detailing but i think it's come together and just looking at all the colors here i'm absolutely loving it the top down view in terms of the colors with Arlington park the lights that i've now put around the modern art museum here and on this residential at the waterfront and of course on the top of that tower as well is yeah just bring it all together really really nicely i'm loving all the colors spread across oridan that's one of my favorite things but here we go there's the oridan skyline at night so now just to go over some of the details so yeah clearly in terms of lights we have added in rainbow lights here all around the modern art museum we've got little statues dotted about i have also put in lots of bollards at the top here big long rows of bollards to block off the top of the keys and there's lots of people moving about backs and forwards on there which is lovely to see down by these houses we've just done some very simple garden detailing here just some little places with some benches and that type of thing that they can sit in just some trees dotted around i have got a big car park in with the playground in here more communal gardens just very very basic residential detailing down there and then as we come up towards the transport plaza so yeah we've got lots of these planters statues that sort of thing dotted around and then a few of these little gardens here we've got more of the pink lights i just couldn't resist and this little fountain plaza as well has turned out really really nicely here let's just go back to daylight and then we can see it properly there we go so we'll just use some tiling detail with a little wall around it to create this little fountain area there with a couple of benches a couple of newsstands yeah we've got lots of these little gardens dotted around the downtown because i wanted to bring a little taste of oridan into the downtown so still there's lots of greenery dotted around lots of planters with trees that sort of thing yeah another one of these little gardens here with lots of benches in it and the nice mix of trees that we have going on then around panoa street yeah we've got more more just simple fountain structures here so i've used a few rocks around this another wall to go all the way around that and some bushes just to add a little bit of interest to it We've got a little cafe area eatery down here with a few benches planters just to decorate it up yeah more gardens lots of gardens around this asset here I wanted to keep this quite green out towards the coast so when we look at the view there we've got lots of these lovely trees coming out in front of this big rock feature there next to the modern art museum and tried to keep some just plain grassy bits in as well like there and if we come down to this main juncture, which is actually one of my favourite places. Now, have you, it's the same sculptures everywhere, but I'm going to say an artist commissioned a few of the same sculptures and dotted them around Oridan. That's the little bit of lore for you there. But yeah, a few different sculptures dotted around on these corners. And then we do have this big main plaza, which I've tried to... I actually copied somewhere in Detroit for this, trying to copy the pattern in the tiles here, just to give it a little bit of interest. Just got some food stalls, a couple of little market stalls down this end some statues and just some general benches so it's a nice communal communal plaza area again a little bit of greenery here now you would have seen under the highway as well i've put in a lot and lots of car parks if we come down to this level there's an awful lot of car parks as we go along here which i think have fitted in quite nicely and i've made sure to do the spaces all around these pillars so that it looks proper uh, and like it does actually fit we've got lots of this industrial fencing but yeah you can come all the way along and you see these big hidden car parks that are getting lots and lots of use actually um looking yeah pretty nice hidden away underneath there of course we've got our big multi-stories dotted around as well there should be plenty of parking for people now i have left this area relatively clear for the time being just, just come in and done some surface painter so we will come in and do some parses on stream together in this area because it's just an awful big job to do this entire area so i've concentrated on this side for now um i have also you wouldn't have seen added in some services so we've got police station over here um lots of different points of access there and we do also have a fire station just over here on this corner again i've put in some fire station prop fire engine props there which i think turned out all right but yeah, lots more to still do around Allenden Park with our Arts District, which we'll come on to in another episode. Oh, and of course, we do also have our little market area over here as well, which I think turned out pretty cute. Tried to mix in a few different assets and prop assets as well as the market assets in here. Oh, someone's passed away at the market. That's great. But then, yeah, there's just lots of little outdoor eatery areas like this one. Lots of different planters dotted around that we can see here planters decorating the edges of the streets as well 
yeah, that's the type of detail that we've gone for. There's an awful lot of it dotted around. I'm trying to remember if I've missed any big points. I think I think that is all the main bits done. If we come down here as well, we can actually see that our metro plaza is actually super, super duper busy, even despite the fact that I still haven't got intercity trains working, which is a real frustration, but something that I am working on. But yeah, loads and loads of people moving around, switching between the different metros and also coming up to this train station as well to take the train line in. We've got a lot of people waiting, waiting on the platform there. Doesn't seem to be as many people using the trams down to this end, but I suppose there's metro, there's monorail for convenience, so maybe it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. That is really it. So yeah, lots more detailing still to come down this end. Clearly the Arts District and building out all of the rest of the outskirts of the downtown too. There's still a lot, a lot more to come in this area of Oridan and of course on the rest of the map still too. But yeah, we have a skyline in. We have a skyline in, which I'm just, yeah, I'm super, super happy to have that in finally. I'm just looking at it from a few different angles all the way over here at Seven Oaks Park. Let's come up to Williams Memorial and there we go. It's finally in there. This view that I banged about on about for so long um, has finally come together. So yeah, super pleased with that. So for our main downtown skyline, that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed the episode, a like below is always really, really appreciated. Drop me a comment and let me know any name suggestions for the different plazas, different areas of the downtown as well. And we'll do some naming on a future episode. But that is all from me for today. So I will catch you next time. Bye bye.